It truly is a chilling story. In July, three young men who were heading out for a night of fishing were murdered. The Polk County Sheriff said the accused shooter was no stranger to the court system. We heard from many of you asking us why the accused 26-year-old man with more than 200 felony charges on his record was not behind bars. 10 investigate Jennifer Titus spent months looking for that answer. What she found has a local state's attorney asking if this was a costly error and should changes be made to the way some court proceedings are held in the county. Yeah, he called me that night to help daddy and I thought something was wrong. I thought they got pulled over for not having a tag on their pickup. But I never thought I'd come up on something like this. It was sad. This is the trigger man. His name's Tony Wiggins. He's a thug. He's a criminal. He's pure evil in the flesh. TJ is someone who his criminal history should shock your conscience. What goes through my mind is why why was he he was why was he even out of jail? Why wasn't he in prison somewhere? I mean, the boys got 230 felons. What was the system doing? Were they not doing their job? All right, sir, you're charged with aggravated battery on a person using a deadly weapon. It's a second degree felony with a max penalty of up to 15 years in prison. And then aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill. Third degree felony with a max penalty of up to five years. In the courtroom, the hearing lasted a total of one minute and 50 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and, and set the standard bonds on it. According to the official transcript, a state's attorney was present, but neither the judge nor the state's attorney mentioned anything about Wiggins' lengthy criminal history, something that is even mentioned in Florida Statute 903. When a judge is considering bond, criminal history must be taken into consideration. Joe Bodyford is a law professor and criminal defense attorney and had questions to why Wiggins' criminal history wasn't mentioned at the hearing. One of the main questions that a judge is going to want to have answered before he or she grants any sort, even thinks about granting any sort of pretrial release on bond or whatever, is going to be, what is the defendant's prior record? We asked that question to the court administrator for the Polk County Courthouse. After his office told us it's not uncommon for the state's attorney not to speak up during first appearance hearings, we asked why. Then they told us by email, it is more likely because the presiding judge had all the info he or she needed at the hearing, including the prior record. That report the judge had is what you see here. Look closer and you'll notice four words, no prior criminal history. My thoughts on this, what was their actions? Why did they dig deeper? Now we did put in a request to speak with somebody on camera with the pretrial services program here at the Polk County Courthouse. They denied our request, but they did agree to speak with us over the phone as long as we didn't record it. They tell me this was an error on their part and they acknowledge that. When I asked them if anybody would be disciplined because of this error, they told me no, and they believe that this is the only error that's been made. I think it's possible that this is not the only error that they've made. This is a pretty substantial and significant miss. You see, the pretrial services unit put together this report for the judge, the ones that wrote those four words. And again, this was a pretty costly miss. I think in any of all the cases, that there could have been a miss on, this should be the one that would sound an alarm 
that would make Polk County want to take a very, very close look at its policies and procedures regarding these pretrial reports. Because those pretrial reports on the weekend specifically are what the state's attorney goes by when it comes to a suspect's criminal history. When we mention this case and the error, the Polk County State's Attorney is now asking that court administration immediately reschedule all weekend first appearance hearings to the afternoon to allow SAO enough time to complete a full criminal history on each defendant as we do during the week. Shouldn't happen again. If he's been through their system more than one time, they should know when this name popped up, they should have known something's not right with saying no criminal history. He's been through their system more than once. I can't bring him back. Nobody can. Ten investigates learned that pre-trial programs in many counties throughout the state all operate differently. A government accountability group publishes a report every year about Florida's programs. And I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of those programs from two years ago, 2018. It says pre-trial release programs supervise defendants who have been released from jail while awaiting disposition of their criminal charges. Of 28 programs, only 10 pretrial release programs were able to provide a detailed breakdowns, breakdown of defendant's criminal history information, which varied among the programs. For these programs, the percentage of defendants with violent felony criminal histories ranged from 2% to 41%. For a look at the report, as well as more information on the state's law regarding pretrial programs, just visit our 10 Investigates page on 10tampabay.com.